Hey coin collectors, welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel. And today it's the 1971 United States dime coin, the so-called Roosevelt dime. We got a bunch of them down here, kind of going across. Uh, you can see this is a 1971 here with no mint mark, so that would be a Philadelphia mint coin. Philadelphia in 1971, they made 163 million of them. But if you can get this in a uh, MS-65, you're talking 10 plus bucks. Um, you see this one's a little bit offset, and we've showed you this before, but um, the uh, the rim wasn't put on quite right. It wasn't, didn't attach quite right. So we have a little doubling of the rim. Um, down here, you can see that they, because it doubled on this side, it didn't have enough space on this side, so the letters don't come in, but no real value to it, I gotta say. Um, tip it up and we see that it is a copper nickel clad copper, a so-called copper nickel outside, uh, copper sandwich on the inside, almost pure copper, and then copper nickel on the uh, back also. It is the United States of America is the torch with the olive branch on this side and the oak branch on this side, olive for peace, oak for strength. You can see the acorns there and you can see the olives. Down at the bottom it says one dime. And what you look for this uh, on these coins is the full bands. Uh, and you can see this band that has a chunk taken out of it. So not going to be a full bands version here, um, but um, it's still uh, a reasonably good, uh, you know, version of the coin because it has this extra on the outside, which I just love to see that doubling. There, if you can get this in a uh, in something, look at this one. So this one. Notice how much wider the rim is down here than it is up there. This is an uncirculated mint set coin. It looks a lot worse than it it would um, value out. Um, in other words, this this could be close to an MS65 just with the kind of um, stuff on it. And you look at the side and you see this is definitely much shinier. Uh, there are 118 reeds that go around the outside of these. And on this one, well, look at that. Um, it, the, uh, you don't really want to clean these, but on this one, it really obscures the bands a little bit, but this is a pretty good band up there, um, down here, pretty good scratch. So again, probably not a whole lot of money. We can actually see the metal as it, uh, cooled down here has, sometimes you get these little kind of almost like burn marks on there. Um, but this is a good quality coin. It's just, um, because of the plastic, um, that it's encased in from the uncirculated mint sets breathes on it sometimes or falls apart you get this kind of shading on here so that's what an uncirculated one looks like though uh, this is the denver mint coin we got a bunch of these and what you look on for in these is how the ones fall apart on these kind of gets dumped in there the denver mint as we said um or maybe we didn't say, they made $378 million. So that was one of the years that they made a lot more at the Denver Mint than the um, Philadelphia Mint. And if you want to look at a Denver Mint in good shape, look at this one. This is just really pure um, quality here. Unfortunately, um, little bite marks from another dime that hit the side of it. Uh, unfortunately, even though this is in really good quality, um, you're still only talking about 10 to 12 bucks. Um, maybe even as low as eight. Uh, you see that another issue with the rim here, the rim is wider here than it is there. Just kind of a standard thing that went across. Unless it moves right off it, you're not going to get any money for that, however. Down here at the bottom, you see a J and an S. That's for John Sinek, the engraver of these coins. Uh, and these first came out in 1946. This coin has had the same image on the front and on the back since 1946. The only thing that's changed in it is the composition, which went from 90% silver in 1964. Well, from 19, uh, from when it was first made, um, 1946 until 1964 was 90% silver. 1965, they changed it to the copper nickel blend. You can, in, in this particular year, you could not get it in a silver, no silver issues uh, in 1971. Uh, the San Francisco Mint ones, which I'll show you next, are all clad. So you notice how this is different polishing on here. You got the S for the San Francisco Mint. Nice S on there. Uh, no questions about that. Um, tip it up on its side and we see they even polish the uh, 
the rims out a little bit, shiny rim, and then get to the back and you see this is a good quality. Look at the bands on the top there. Look at the bands on the bottom. A little tiny bit of cupping you always see on the real good ones down here, the bottom of the torch handle. Um, the acorns look great. The dime, see the little bit of coloring in the dime? A uh, little patina coming on. Um, well, I, I don't know if you call it a patina if it's never been touched, but it's certainly some coloring coming in. Uh, rainbowing, they sometimes call it. All right, so with the San Francisco Mint, as I said, they made 3.22 million. This this one here is worth four plus bucks. Uh, because it came out in such good shape in the first place, there's plenty of them in good shape around. Um, and so you may get 10 bucks with a, a proof 65, 65 plus, but in general, a proof 65 in these only books at about four bucks. All right, so there's our really good versions of the Denver the San Francisco. Um, here is our kind of uh, covered version of the Philadelphia. And then if we go back to here, we can see our used coins. And you're not going to see a used S because S in, in 1971, the San Francisco Mint only did the proof sets. They didn't do uh, business strike regular circulation coins. All right, that's all we have from DC Coin World. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you have in the comment section.